Um, before we get into everything else, I want to ask you about the Malaysian Airlines crash because everybody's talking about it today and sure. has been for a while. You've seen the Indian Ocean like few other people. Um, can you give us a sense of, of the, the scope of that? Like people are wondering why we haven't been able to find remnants of it. Like what, what's your sense of the you know, space down there? On the map it looks so small. You know, it just looks like that area in between Africa and Australia and India to the north. In reality, it is immense and also it's not commonly crossed. Parts of the Atlantic have traffic going back and forth all the time. Up and down the coast, they're busy, congested areas. But there's not a lot of boats go straight from Australia to Africa. It's a huge, empty sea. It's like the size of the United States, and you're looking for one truck somewhere, and you got to see it visually. It's, it's an immense area, and uh, I'm not at all surprised that they're having a horrible time trying to find uh, where that airplane went. You know, it's funny that you draw that great analogy because, of course, you were able to communicate so well when you were uh, circling the Earth. I don't know if you ever saw the piece that um, uh, Brian Williams of NBC Nightly News did on you, and he said, where did they get this guy? <laughs> <laughs> how, how were you able to, to make your messaging from space, if I can put it that way, so meaningful for so many people? Well, I'd been an astronaut for 20 years and I had spoken in schools right from elementary school right through to uh, universities for a whole time, thousands of times. And, and so I knew what, sort of inherently, what people are curious about. What are they interested in? What answers do they want? But also the type of way to get the message across so people will listen to it. And I worked with the Canadian Space Agency for a couple years in advance. We made almost a hundred videos from the space station while I was there, and then had a major event with a school at least once a week. And it had a lasting effect, I think, which is really nice. It's, it's in textbooks, it's in the curricula across the country, and I think there's a whole generation of Canadian kids that have a little different perception of, of Canada's place in the world and our history in space as a result of, of the efforts that we put in. Are you, are you convinced you're able to rejuvenate interest in science too? And I, I admit, I did the piece for the National the night that your Space Oddity came out, yep. and I said, they did more science than any other mission ever, but take a look at this video, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yet, I mean, you got the message out that yeah. science was done up there. Do you think it has resonated and the kids were are rejuvenated? Well, uh, I've been a musician my whole life, and I think uh, the important thing to remember is we're not robots up there. This is not some little robot driving around collecting data. We're people up there. We're running hundreds of experiments, but at the same time, it's a, it's a cultural newness for us to see the world that way, to be able to celebrate it in, in all different standard cultural art forms, including music. And I think people, when they, when they understand it that way, you can then go back to the NASA and the Canadian Space Agency science sites and see that it, there used to be this many people, and now there are this many people that are following the science side of it. So uh, I think uh, people just behave like people anywhere and by letting them see the, the human interest side of it, then they also start to understand all the other things that it's doing for us. People have been uh, circling the Earth uh, for some time now. It's, uh, having said that, it's not run of the mill. And <laughs> overcoming fear, I know, is one of the uh, parts of your talk at uh, TED here this week. I don't want you to give it away, <laughs> what your message is, but can you explain why that's an important message to get out? I think a lot of people uh, allow many of the major decisions in their life to be dictated by fear. I'm, I'm afraid, I don't, I don't want to, I'm afraid of flying, I'm afraid of relationship, I'm whatever, I don't want to do that. And rather than actually try and dig into it and see why they're afraid and figure out maybe a coping mechanism, like we have to do to do a spacewalk or, or to fly a rocket ship, we've learned a whole methodology of how to get around your fear to accomplish something that otherwise you would have been denied. And uh, I think it's a really useful topic to everybody, and that's why I uh, chose to talk about it here at TED. Fantastic. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Nice to talk to you.